The True Gospel Message The true gospel message is this, once the Spirit of the Living God is quickened within you. There is nothing you ever again need outside of yourself. For instance, Christians teach that someday Jesus is going to come back and then everything is going to be wonderful. But what they haven't realized is that when he did go away, he only went away for 40 days. On the day of resurrection, he that was among them breathed on them and regenerated within them the life, the nature, the seed and the character of God that was in them. John 20 verse 22. The gospel was not to get people in any way to just correct their outward behavior but to realize that the living, transcendent, resurrected Spirit of Christ was now in them. What they needed was not rules and regulations, but to have an unveiling and understanding that the new creation life, that new creation man that was in them had the very life and nature of God himself that they could learn to live by. Galatians 1 verse 3 Grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Now, what was the present evil world that Paul was talking about? I can guarantee, he wasn't talking about sin. As he goes on in Galatians, he tells about how he was so well-bred in religion, and how he was exalted in his religion. But he said he gave all that up as dumb that he might know Christ and go on in the reality of the gospel. The present evil age that Paul was delivered from was the religious age of his day. There are two Gospels presented and both are in operation today. There is the Gospel of Law, and there is the Gospel of Grace. In most of the Christian churches that we go to, teach us a mixture of those two. They say, God is great. You were saved by grace. You know, even before you were born. Jesus died for you. Well, that is the message of grace. But then, I don't know how you were taught. But if you were in church very long, you were certainly taught after you were saved how you needed to behave. My pastor told me in the First Assembly of God Church that I began to attend right after I was saved, he said. Gary, you never work your way to the cross, but you better work your way away from it. Because God loves you. That has been proven because he went to the cross and he died for you. But now that he is in you, and now that you understand that you are forgiven, from this point on you have to live a holy life. In the First Assembly of God, it was not quite as bad as some. But it was no smoking, no drinking, and no going to movies. They gave you a little card to sign that you wouldn't do any of these things. And I gave the card back to the pastor, and I said, well, I don't see anything wrong with those things. That was my beginning of once you are saved, they say. You come to Jesus just as you are, but once you come to him just as you are. Then you must begin to live according to what the scriptures teach. And I'm not saying not to do that. What they miss is that once you really have the revelation of what you know in your head. Once you really have the revelation that the Spirit of God dwells in you, nobody has to teach you not to do this or not to do that. We all have a new nature on the inside of us that is birthed. And that is what the ministry should be geared towards. Ministering to that new life, not trying to get that old life to change and to act better, to quit sinning. Or whatever it is, and try to get you to change by an outward law. The new life in us needs to be fed and that life will mature and manifest the life of unconditional love. Words by, Gary Sigler